In our last video, we walked through how to deal with a bond that's issued at a discount. We also just talked about the basics of bonds and kind of what bonds are and, and the basics of how they work. Uh, and so if you're more interested in a bit of a bond primer, I would refer you to the last video in this series, uh, part one of, of this series. This is part two and this will be the final uh, part in, in the series on bonds. Uh, in this video, we're just going to walk through a bond issued at a premium, doing the effective interest method and uh, dealing with those first few periods of it. Uh, so again, if you're looking for uh, retirement of bonds or conversion of bonds, that's beyond the scope of what we're going to do in this video. We're just going to do the basics of a bond uh, effective interest rate method uh, and in this video it'll be dealing with a bond issued at a premium. So let's work through the problem. We'll work through the effective interest table and uh, see if we can uh, get through it from top to bottom. Okay, so the question says, on March 1st, 2012, XYZ Company issues 10-year 7% bonds with a face value of $300,000. Because the market rate of interest is 6% on the date of issue, so already I'm thinking to myself, we're issuing bonds and we're going to pay 7%. The market rate of interest is 6%. All of a sudden, our bonds are going to have some value in the market. People are going to want our bonds and they're going to be willing to pay more than the face value. They're going to be willing to pay a premium for our bonds. And that's exactly what this sentence says. So just rereading it says, because the market rate of interest is 6% on the date of issue, the bonds are issued at a premium with a bond quote of 107.44. And remember how quotes on bonds work. That number is a percentage, at least in my mind. So we're getting 107.44% of what we asked for. In fact, let's figure out how much money we're getting and maybe do the first journal entry right off the bat here. We asked for $300,000. That's the face value of our bond. That's what we're going to have to pay back. But because our interest rate is very attractive to investors, they're going to pay us a little bit extra. They're going to pay us 107% of what we wanted for. And if I want to express that as a decimal, it's times 1.0744. And I get 322.320. So that's how much cash I receive. I'm going to have to pay back 300 grand, but I get paid 322.320 today. Marvelous. So let's do that first journal entry. I, I always do that before I do my effective interest table. I, I, I just like to get it out of the way and it, it helps me in setting up the table. So on uh, March 1st, 2012, again we're answering part B here, not part A. We'll do part A after. Uh, we're getting cash and we get paid more than what our bonds uh, face value is. We get paid 322320 So I'm going to debit cash for 322 320. Uh, I'm going to have to pay back at the end of this bond $300,000. So I credit the bonds payable for the face value of my bond. I'm saying I'm going to pay you back 300 grand. Then I say, okay, well, I'm missing a credit here. I'm missing a credit of 22320. Now, last time, if you go back to the last question, you'll see when we issued at a discount, we debit the discount. Well, in this scenario, we're not issuing at a discount, but a premium. So if we debit our discount, it stands to reason the premium is like the opposite. We credit our premium. These bonds were issued at a premium. So we credit premium, uh, 22 320 and we're all set. And in fact, we're ready to jump into our effective interest table. Oh, maybe I should read the whole thing. The bond pays interest semi-annually on March 1st and September 1st of each year. The company uses the effective interest method of amortizing bond discounts and premiums. And again, just to reiterate something from the last video, if you're doing straight line, it's probably not the video for you. Uh, you know, we're looking at effective interest rate method. That's what uh, GAAP and IFRS say that uh, companies are supposed to be using. Uh, the company's fiscal year end is December 31st. Okay, so let's go ahead and start filling out our effective interest table. Again, I'm a very generous guy. I just give this to my students when they're on their exams. Maybe you'll have to memorize this or something similar. Uh, so the semi-annual interest payments, uh, well again, the first day the date of issue was March 1st, 2012. Uh, our first payment is September 1st, 2012. Uh, then we make another payment March 1st, 2013, and September 1st, 2013. And this could keep going, right? This is actually a 20 period bond. This should have 20 lines in it, uh, but I'm just going to stop it there because, you know, it would take all day to fill out. 
wouldn't take any time in Excel, but it would take all day to fill out on your own. Uh, our interest payment is what we've promised to pay. We've promised to pay 7%, but remember that that 7% gets divided by 2 because everything on here is semi-annual. You can see it there, semi-annual interest period. Everything here is semi-annual, so 7% divided by 2 means we're going to pay back 3.5% every 6 months. Our interest expense is based on the market rate of interest. You'll recall the market rate here was 6%. And again, I do the same kind of math, 6% divided by 2, and that equals 3%. So I'll fill that number there. So discount or premium amortization. This time we got a premium. Let's just black out discount. We're not interested in that. This is a premium. Discount premium account balance. Well, I'll get rid of the word discount there. This is just premium account balance. Bond carrying amount, dollar sign minus D for a discount, dollar sign plus D for a premium. Let's get rid of discount. Um, all right. So uh, again, remember what to fill in here. It's the uh, maturity value of our bond plus D. So the maturity value of this bond, that's the amount we're going to have to pay back at the end, is $300,000 face value. Okay. So we've got it set up. At this point, it becomes a very, very mechanical process. Remember, the first three items don't get filled in because on March 1st, I'm not making an interest payment. This is where we borrow the money, right? That's what a bond is all about, borrowing some money. We don't pay it back on day one. We're going to pay back, start paying interest in six months. Again, that interest expense clock hasn't started ticking on day one. It'll well, it starts on day one, but nothing's built up as of, of the first moment of the bond issue. And there's no premium amortization on day one. So these first three cells don't get used. However, there is a premium account balance, and we calculated it already. We said that the premium was 22320 So let's fill that in. And I'm just going to, again, grab some formatting here. Oops, there we go. Uh, and our bond carrying amount, 300000 plus D, this represents the amount of money we, we got for our bond uh, in the first cell. 300000 plus D, 300000 plus 22320 is 322320. Our interest payment, 3.5% of maturity value, so 3.5% times the 300000 we've got to pay back. Again, uh, I'm going to go a little bit quicker this time than I did on the discount one, so if you're confused here, Take a look at the discount video. I walk through these calculations a little more slowly. But, you know, if you've done the discount one, this is pretty straightforward. So 300,000 times 3.5% 3 is 10,500. Remember now, that interest payment isn't going to fluctuate uh, unless I make some, some bond conversion or something. But just assuming everything goes according to plan with this bond, uh, that's going to be a $10,500 uh, interest payment throughout. Our interest expense. 3% of the preceding bond carrying amount, so I take 3% times the bond carrying amount from before, 322, 320. That's what the preceding bond carrying amount means. Uh, again, I don't know why this one always has a weird time with decimals. Let's get rid of them. Uh, now it says A minus B, 10,500 minus 9670. I noted it last video, I'll note it again. If you get a negative number, you have gone wrong. A minus B, 10.5 minus 96.70 is a positive, 8.30. D minus C, 22.320 minus 8.30 gives us 21.490. Our premium account balance then, or our, our bond carrying amount rather, is 300,000 plus D. 300,000 plus 21.490 is 321.490. Now, we're always expecting whether it's a discount or premium, then when we have a discount account balance or a premium account balance, it'll be in column D. Uh, we're always expecting this number to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And in 20 periods, I would expect this number to be zero or just very close to zero, just rounding errors off to zero. It'll be very close to zero. I would expect this column E to get, get closer and closer to the face value of my bonds, to the $300,000 I have to pay back. So again, I borrowed... I got $322,000 in cash paid to me today, March 1st. Because my interest is attractive, I'm only going to have to pay back $300,000. Now, 
Why did they overpay? Well, because I'm overpaying interest throughout the, the the life of this bond. I'm paying 7% where they could only get 6% from other people. Um, okay, let's move on to the next. Our interest payment, 3.5% of the bond's maturity. 3.5% times 300,000 is 10,500. Our interest expense, 3% of the preceding bond carrying amount, 3% times the preceding bond carrying amount, that's the carrying amount immediately before this line, 321,490, uh, 96,44 and 70 cents, 96,45, uh, 10,500 minus 96,45 is 855, the premium account balance 21,490 minus 855 is 26,34, and again, 300,000, oops, it's a minus, no, equals 300,000 plus 2634 gives us 32634. Now, I think if I just fill this down, I'll get the next row because Excel is so smart. And sure enough, I have. And in fact, I could fill this down for 20 periods and, and figure out, well, I'm, I'm kind of going over here. Let's see. Uh, there's going to be a point where we hit, yeah, just about bang on 300,000. And we're only off because of rounding, uh, and that's 20 periods down the road. So you can see that this bond worked properly. But we were only interested in the first four periods. I was just messing around in Excel there. Um, okay, so this would be uh, the amount uh, that we were asked to fill out. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do the journal entries now. So uh, our, our next journal entry is, of course, September 1st, 2012. We'll just highlight that uh, row, and we'll do the entry. Interest payment, $10,500. we are going to pay $10,500 cash. Interest expense, $96.70. Well, we always debit expenses, so again, credit to cash for the interest payment. Debit the interest expense for $96.70, and we'll deal with the premium last. So uh, let's do it. September 1st, uh, 2012. I'm going to credit cash for 10500 I am going to debit interest expense for the amount it tells me to, 9670 That's the reason we do the table. And now I'm, I'm, I can see I'm missing a, a debit. And we've set our premium of 22320 We're going to amortize it. We're going to reduce that premium. Our premium amortization is 830. We want to reduce that premium by 830, and we're going to continually reduce the premium until the day that we uh, pay back the bond. So debit premium by, what was it, 830? Yeah, 830. And we're all set. So September 1st, 2012, couldn't be more straightforward. The Next entry is the one that is the tricky one, and maybe your instructor is not as mean as me. I make my students always do these uh, in-between periods, which are a big pain in the neck, but I think they're good to learn. So uh, let's deal with this weird in-between period. March 1st, 2013 is the next date on our chart. However, you can see the question asks us to do the journal entry for the year end, which was December 31st. The company's fiscal year end is December 31st. We've got to do a uh, December 31st journal entry. Unfortunately, we don't have the data for December 31st. There's no December 31st on the chart. As I said last time, though, this line, this March 1st line represents the months of September 2012. And you might say, well, there's already a September on there, but that's the period ended September 1st, so it doesn't count September. It's everything up to September. So September 2012 is included in this March 1st. October 2012, November 2012, December 2012, <laughs> oh my goodness, January 2013, and February 2013. And again, we don't count March because March 1st, it's the beginning of March. So uh, up to December 31st, we're interested in these four months, four out of the six months on the line. So again, that line represents, you know, it's semi-annual interest. It's, it's six months worth of, of data, uh, but we're only interested in four of the six months. 
So we're going to take all of these numbers, all the ones that are going to drive our journal entries, we're not going to take the whole number, we're going to take four sixths, because again, four sixths of the data is, is what carries us up to December. So our interest expense is going to be four sixths of 96.45, and why don't we start there? It's December 31st, and again, September to December, September, October, November, December is four months. It's December 31st, 2012. I'm going to debit my interest expense. Oh, it's the end of a long night, and my writing is just getting worse and worse. Uh, debit interest expense by four sixths of. Uh, 9645. That was our interest expense. So 4 sixths of 9645 equals, let's find out, 9645 times 4 divided by 6. 6430. Oh, I love it when I get even numbers. 6430. Don't have to worry about rounding. Uh, next. Oh, didn't want to see that. Uh, I want to see the next item, our premium amortization, 855. Again, I want 4 sixths of eight, 855. And I'm going to debit my premium by that amount. I'm going to reduce the premium. Remember, the premium is a credit account. It uh, uh, adds to our bond, uh, 22,320, and we want to reduce it by debiting it. We're going to debit it by 4 sixths of, I think it was 855. I'll just double check that. Yeah, four sixths of eight fifty five. So four six times eight fifty five is five seventy. Wow, even numbers. Almost like I planned it. Uh, so debit interest expense, debit premium. Now looking above, I would want to credit cashier, except for I know I don't make any payments on December 31st, right? We're only making payments September and March. December 31st, I don't make a payment, so I've got to say, well. I owe them then. This interest is building up. And that's the whole point of this accrual is to record interest payable and, and make sure we've recorded the appropriate expenses. And so the amount of my interest payable is going to be four sixths of 10,500, the amount I would have paid in cash. So four sixths times 10,500 equals. 4 divided by 6 times 10,500, oops, we missed a letter, or one too many, $7,000 even. So let's fill that in. All right, and December 31st is in the bag. We'll do one more journal entry. Our final journal entry is for March 1st, 2013, our next payment. And so rather than taking four sixths here, we're going to take get my pen here, the last two months of information, and that leads us up to March 1st, 2013, and that's 2 6. So I'll take all those same numbers, multiply by 2 6. So interest expense isn't 96.45, it's not 4 6 of it. Now we're just doing for January and February, leading us to March 1st. Again, that's two months to get us to March 1st. 96.45 times 2 6. So we're going up to March 1st. 2013, we're going to debit our interest. Whoa, my writing is messy. Interest expense by 2 sixths times by 96.45 for the interest expense. 2 six times 96.45, should be able to do it in my head, but I can't. It's getting too late. Times 9.645 equals 3250. We're going to debit our premium by two sixths of our premium amount and our premium amortization was 855 so two sixths times 855 is what would it be 285 I think. I'm going to double check that. But let's see how I did. Uh, 2 divided by 6 times 855 285. All right. Uh, last one. We're going to, well, actually not the last one. Uh, then we look at the, the last item and it would be cash. And I'm not going to pay two six of the cash. I got to pay the full amount. So I got to credit cash for the full 10,500. 
So I'm going to leave room for another debit because I can see this is going to be out of balance if I don't. So I'm going to credit cash for the full pull, 10500 and I'm saying, well, I'm missing a big debit. And in fact, if you look at the numbers and you crunch the numbers, you'll see that the missing debit is exactly $7,000. And the astute people among you will realize, oh, yeah, I paid off that interest payable. If I paid 10500 any payable on this has got to go. So let's get rid of that 7000 interest payable. I'm going to debit interest payable for $7,000. That number just comes down here and we're getting rid of it. And we've paid it off. Again, the interest or the entries from here are very straightforward, right? Just follow along the same flow we've been going with. So if you can do this, you've got the basics of bonds. Again, review the previous uh, video for sort of basic primer on bonds and and dealing with bonds issued at a discount this video is all about bonds issued at a premium and if you're looking for retirements or conversions I think it's a little beyond the scope of our our intro uh, course but uh, well certainly beyond the scope of this video it would take me another hour and I'm not up for that tonight alright so you can see the journal entries we've done a great job here that's all for bonds for now.